what value do you actually want to bring into the world? When you really think about it, celebrity culture is weird. Because the girls want to know, is our good sis dating? And the answer to that is, I have nothing to contribute to this question. <laughs> Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you are all doing well. I am literally flying out to New Orleans in about 12 hours. And instead of packing, what am I doing? Filming a Q&A baby, because I wanted to talk to you guys. Honestly, I feel like I haven't done a Q&A in a very long time. And so I was literally just thinking it the other day and I was like, why not ask the girlies, you know? Just hop on IG, if you don't follow me there, then you should, and ask them what they want to ask me. <laughs> and so that is what has brought us here today. So let's talk and let me answer all your questions about life, relationships, me, business, money, all the things that I talk about here. So let's go. The first question is, I love the way you talk and express yourself. How did you achieve that level of intelligence? That is very kind. Thank you so much. What an amazing compliment. One, reading. Two, just over time working on my confidence in expressing myself. I've always been quite an expressive person. I just love a good conversation. Like one thing that my channel will probably communicate to you is that this girl likes to talk. <laughs> she loves to talk and I really do love engaging conversations. I think the way you can become a better speaker, even more than just reading to like expand your vocabulary, is actually listening to other people speak. So I think this is a main reason why I love audiobooks, I love podcasts, I love films and documentaries. I feel like you learn more than just vocabulary, you learn style of delivery. And I think that is a huge part of expressing yourself, body language, emotion, stuff like that. So analyze how people communicate, analyze how they express themselves, and to some degree test out mimicking that and then forming it to your own unique style, your own unique voice, and the story that you want to tell ultimately and your opinions and viewpoint. Um, there are definitely a lot of things I need to do to refine my speaking capability. I think I can be way more concise and I think that comes from just knowing exactly the point that you're trying to make and being very direct in the way you communicate that. One thing that I've noticed about me is I love a good stream of consciousness, like I will talk as the thoughts are coming to my head and sometimes you need to take a pause and kind of, you know, pace yourself and say things after you've refined it in your mind. And I'm definitely learning that now that I'm trying to be a better communicator, both in real life and also in my content as well. Um, thank you for thinking I'm intelligent. I think just expose yourself to information and knowledge all the time. Be someone who is thirsty for knowledge. Um, Google search everything, ask people questions, loads of questions, um, and be very inquisitive. You'll just become clued up on so many things. I think I know so many like unnecessary things sometimes, but I also think that makes you more and more interesting and you never know where the information you have will actually be useful. I learned that from my dad. From My dad, my dad knows something about everything. <laughs> like You'll bring up something just left field to my dad and be like, yeah, I, I know that. Like something about computers or something about trains or something, I don't know, something about planes. He'll know it. And it's just like, where do you know that? And it's just, when you have a question, you seek out the answer and then you log that in your brain and I have something to say. I do also think another element of why people think I'm intelligent is people view me as quite wise. I really appreciate that. And I think wisdom comes from learning from experience as well as the fear of the Lord, okay? And searching out for wisdom in every little thing and just seeing the beauty and the lessons that come with life as well. How do you like to wind down and relax? Well, I love to watch things. <laughs> I love a good film. Um, I really love to just get lost in a story, but also I have been enjoying going on walks and you guys know I'm on a health journey anyway. And so I have been outside walking a lot and just something about breathing in the fresh air, looking at the blue sky, even though today it's very good gray, brings me so much calm and I'm usually doing that whilst listening to an audiobook. So it's absolutely amazing that today's video is sponsored by Audible. Now if you've been following me for a long time then you know that I am an Audible girly through and through. And Audible, if you didn't know, is not only the place you go to to get your favourite classic or new audiobooks, it also has so much exciting content being released all the time and they have recently come out with a new podcast which I have been listening to called Lolly Adefopez Fan 
fan mail. Now, this is one of the most satirical, comedic podcasts which I've listened to. So Lolly Adafope's fan mail is hosted by Lolly Adafope and she invites A-list stars who are her friends to come on and basically tell her why they love her and she gets her fans to write in as well to tell her how much she is loved and honestly I think it pokes so much at celebrity culture when you really think about it celebrity culture is weird like the way we obsess about people and the way that they can obsess about themselves is crazy and the way that those weird elements are over exaggerated in this podcast I think makes it a really interesting listen I was able to get through like five episodes in one day whilst I was cleaning which is another thing I do to wind down and relax get my life organized la 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 Sorry, I didn't realise we were recording. Not a lot of people know that I can sing and that I actually have perfect pitch. <laughs> and by people, I mean casting directors. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm currently listening to a podcast. It's actually quite interesting. It took me a minute to kind of understand the humour. Um, but it's quite like, the comedic timing is quite funny. Um, and it's definitely satire, like real satire. You'd think you're listening to a really bad podcast if you weren't clued up on the fact that it's a comedy show. Um, so I'm actually enjoying it. It's something different from what I usually listen to. When things seem stressful, when you listen to something which is so like trivial and funny and so surface level, it kind of reminds you to just have a good laugh. And that's another thing I do to relax and calm myself down laugh find humor in everything and so if you're looking for something that will actually make you laugh out loud then i suggest you go and listen to lolly adefopez fan mail on audible definitely make sure you sign up using the link in my description because new members get a 30 day free trial and you get to keep the book that you get for the first time which i suggest should maybe be to my sisters a guide to building lifelong friendship but let's not let's not plug my book in there right now even though i think you should get it but also membership on audible gives you access to so much content there's the plus catalog new podcasts being added all the time books which are actually included in your membership and you don't have to use your credit to buy and so if you are looking to expand your knowledge as well as find some entertainment whilst you go on a walk clean your house and do your day-to-day -day tasks then why not sign up to audible you guys know i'll always stand by it like <laughs> for real and thank you so much to audible for sponsoring yet another video love you guys tips on losing weight you're looking amazing by the way thank you so much and then somebody else asked about like gym and diet updates so I am currently at a stage where I am actually losing weight again. Um, I felt like I plateaued for a really long time for like the best part of a year. And I didn't really understand what was going on, but I've learned to like be really patient with myself. So what I'm actually doing is more low intensity steady state cardio. So a lot more walking, which is why I've been listening to so many audiobooks. I've literally been talking about it all over Instagram because when I'm walking, I don't know what else to do but to listen to something. A lot of making better choices I would definitely not say I've been as strict on my diet as I was when I first started my weight loss journey like I'm I can't remember the last time I logged food on my fitness pal and maybe that lack of attention to like the finer things has slowed down my progress a little bit but I also think it has eased me um, and it has allowed me to approach my weight loss in less of a strict and punishing way but more of a like girl this is a lifestyle change which you have to make for a really long time um, for the rest of your life and so take time like actually take time and do it in a way that is comfortable do it in a way that is sustainable and that for me isn't necessarily intuitive eating and like eating whatever i want because the cravings sometimes my body is telling me you want a burger at 11 and i'm like <laughs> I know I do, but I can't. I'm not intuitively eating, um, but I am definitely eating to the point where I am full and satiated um, and not like over full. I'm not overindulging in food and I'm kind of paying attention to my cycle as well. So what I would say has been the biggest difference for me in this time has been learning myself, learning my body and its needs, especially according to my cycle, but also just trying my best to incorporate movement into my everyday life and not being so focused on like, like, oh, I have to go to the gym. And if I don't go to the gym, it means that I can't move or I can't, you know, burn calories. No, like you can actually get up and go for a walk. You can decide to, I don't know, walk up the stairs and 
just be more active in your daily life. And that has been really helpful as well as allowing myself to not get too hungry. So I'm actually having smaller meals more often. But if you would like to see a full video on it, then let me know. I'm happy to make a like what I eat in a day kind of video or um, just like a, a full weight loss journey kind of update. But yeah, let me know. Advice for a quiet slash shy 20 year old girl who struggles to socialize and finds herself alone a lot. Um, I completely feel you as someone who is deep down actually an introvert. I, yeah, sometimes I don't want to be around anybody, but I understand there's a difference between that and then actually wanting to have a social life, but not being able to. So one thing I would suggest is maybe getting to the root cause of why, why are you alone quite often? Is it that you actually prefer your own company, which I don't think there's anything wrong with, or is it that you have a bit of social anxiety? Um, do you have like a fear of people, a fear of going out? Like definitely inspect what is stopping you from sh like socializing more. But then I think the overall thing is you have to be really intentional about trying to find those relationships and find those connections for yourself. Um, whether that's joining, you know, small community groups like church, a book club, um, actually going and leaving your house or reaching out to people who you know, you know, who you're connected with on social media, maybe even colleagues to just be like, hey, you know, do you want to grab a coffee? And just doing things with people. If you find yourself wanting to go to the cinema, just reach out to one person who you think is cool, who you may already be friends with, but want to deepen your relationship with and be like, hey, would you like to come with me? So maybe start being more proactive and making the first move and like initiating the relationship building. And um, once you've overcome whatever is the underlying deep root issue that you may have, I wouldn't even say issue, but like cause of you being so like, insular and to yourself um if the case is because you are shy you're struggling to put yourself out there don't feel intimidated to have to do this to large amounts of people or in large groups or having to approach people all the time like start engaging with people who may be in closer proximity to you already who you already have a good relationship with and start going out more with them and then venture into making deeper connections with other people. I hope that's helpful. I may not be the best person to ask because I'm like, as much as I'm an introvert, I'm very, I was about to say extroverted, which is a huge contradiction, but like I'm quite bubbly and out there. And oftentimes I'm the loud one in the group. So definitely ease yourself in and take your time. I know you left your church a few months ago. Have you found a new one? I actually have, and that was a whole journey in itself, but I've been going to a new church since January and I am really, really liking it. What business books slash podcasts would you recommend for young women in their early 20s? I have a large collection of like audiobooks and books which I listened to when I was first starting my business. One of them was Profit First. Profit First is an amazing book if you were trying to like start a business and actually make money. Um, the other one is E-Myth. E-Myth will tear you to shreds. It will literally tear you apart because of how much it reads into whether you are not necessarily built for this, but whether you are building well. And I do think there is a way that you can build wrong. Also, I'm kind of looking at our bookshelf and thinking, well, all oh, start with why. Start with why is a really good book as well um, to make you very purpose driven. In terms of podcasts, I would say, I would say if you are starting out um, in business with a co-founder, then I've talked about this podcast before. I think towards the end of last year listen to couple them on audible by um idris elba and sabrina elba they idris and sabrina elba see the conciseness thing yeah um they sit down with people who are running businesses together who may be a couple a mother and daughter they sat down with like christian Chris and Kim Kardashian, Chris Jenner, to talk about how they are building the Kardashian empire. That's really good insight into having a co-founder relationship with someone, but also having a relationship with them and how to maintain that. If you're a solo entrepreneur, I would say listen to Harvard Business Reviews podcasts about leadership and about like what's happening in the business world, how to optimize for business, especially if you're trying to build something really big. But more importantly, if you're trying to be a really strong leader. Of course, there's also things like Diary of a CEO. I really like a lot of the old episodes um, where they sat down with founders and really got, I feel like Stephen Bartlett is a really good interviewer for getting past the like superficial stuff and deeper into, okay, well, but how do you actually build, th build this? Which brings me on to another podcast suggestion, which is how I built this, um, which is a really good podcast to give you insight into founders who are starting up and how they started. Um, and it kind of reminds you that everybody started somewhere 
Now, some people's starting points was millions of pounds in the bank, um, but others were bootstrapping. <laughs> the Break, The Break as well, The Break podcast, which is new. I would suggest listening to that. There's also Grace Beverly's podcast where she sits down with, you know, um, influencers, business people, different like titans of industry. Um, but yeah, those are, I don't really listen to too much, too many, sorry, business focused podcasts. I'm more so like into business books and I may put a list together, especially of my favorite audio books as well. I want to make a name for myself and build a career, but I don't know what career and where to start. Any words of advice on how to go about this? Definitely read Start With Why. That's a really good book to help you with this. But I think this is connected to figuring out what value do you actually want to bring into the world? What do you want people to gain from your career? What change do you actually want to make in the world? I think ambition is good but to be driven purely by ambition can take you down some really dark places i think you have to be mission driven purpose driven and think about okay what contribution do i want to make to this world you know what do i want to help people with ultimately um and what are my skill sets that i would like to use to actually do that so for me i really care about women i care about our well-being i care about um our social outcomes and I'm really interested in media. I'm really interested in um, community building and like entrepreneurship. And so for me, those were the tools that I wanted to use um, to do that. For you, it may be something completely different, a completely different audience, a completely different mission um, and a completely different avenue or resource to be able to do it. So think for yourself about the things that actually matter to you, the things you like and how they can work together to bring some positive impact into the world. Because I'm Personally, I am impact driven um, and I think everyone should be. Tips for solo traveling. I actually have a whole video coming out soon about this very thing, which is advice on how to like put a trip together and things you should be aware of whilst you are solo traveling. But the main thing is start somewhere close. <laughs> start somewhere close. Um, like for me, I live in the UK. So I would go to somewhere in mainland Europe um, or somewhere else in the UK, which I've never been to before. And basically experience solo traveling for a few days. If you live in the United States, I would say go to a different state. If you live in Africa, go to a different African country. Um, just do something which is too far removed from you for the first time but in terms of like if you have you know solo traveled before and you just want to take it up a notch start connecting with people on the ground as much as I have solo traveled I very much stay solo whilst I'm you know in a different country but now to kind of push myself out of my comfort zone but it requires you know a bit more street smarts I'm trying to like make connections with people and build relationships and friendships and meet new people whilst I'm out in these different places, which hopefully can make my trips more exciting as well. Favorite country you visited so far and why? Jamaica. <laughs> so last November, Renee and I went to Jamaica, literally right before our live show. And the food, the sun, the music, the activities we got to do were fantastic. Guys, I know I said the food already, but the food at the hotel we were staying at was chef's kiss it was all inclusive i like was laying by the beach for most of you know the days even though we were still working whilst we were out there i just felt so relaxed <laughs> and so jamaica was by far like my favorite trip and i'm definitely looking forward to going back um it was just it was perfect and i was enjoying it so much to the point where i actually didn't vlog it like i i have clips of me but it's literally me like lying on a beach bed how many hours of that do you actually want to see? Do you get what I mean? And so yeah, Jamaica was amazing. I'm sorry that there's not going to be a vlog of Jamaica, but it was my favourite country that I've been to so far. Are you ever going to revive your hair company? Yes, but in a different format with more funding, more investment, and as a better founder, as a better entrepreneur. I was not equipped in like my entrepreneurial knowledge, I would say, to run that business well. And so I took a step back from it in hopes that I would learn more about being a good entrepreneur. And so I'm doing that right now, like with two of my sisters, with all the other things that I'm doing with my career, I'm trying my best to equip myself so I could build something which is way stronger and way better later down the line. And thankfully the hair and beauty industry is one which will literally last the test of time, will always have it, will always need 
need it. Will they be new? Will there be new ways of doing it? Definitely, technology will have a big impact on that. Automated systems, artificial intelligence, and machine learning will have a huge impact on that. But I feel like I won't adapt well if I just start how I was doing it before. And so I'm currently prioritizing learning and equipping myself with the skills to bring back a hair company or a hair and beauty company in a much better way. So yes, but not now. What can you learn about yourself in relationships compared to friendships? I would say how selfless you're willing to be. With friendships, there's still a degree of selflessness, especially when it comes down to sisterhood and just journeying with someone in general. It requires a, a sense of like just loving someone without guarantee of like any like gain. Just being there for somebody. I think loving someone is in itself quite a selfless act, but it's even more heightened in relationships, in romantic relationships. And I think you learn how selfless you are, how much you're willing to compromise, how much you're willing to put somebody's well-being as a priority in your life, not necessarily before yours, but trying to get to a point where both of you are actually okay and how much you're willing to sacrifice. And literally, I think as a single person, you're very much in your selfish era. As much as you can be community-minded, your community still orbits around you as an individual whereas now you're letting somebody be at the center of your world with you as well and you're no longer especially if you're like married you're no longer just a you you're now an us so we are my family and it's like oh okay I actually have to be selfless about this so I think that's what romantic relationships teach you compared to friendships do you believe in romantic soulmates is there such thing as the one I think it's a flawed concept if there's only one person for everyone one person getting it wrong messes it up for everyone <laughs> essentially um I also think it puts too much pressure on your partner to be the perfect person and if anything then goes wrong or there's a misunderstanding or things don't seem to be working out for a season or maybe the timing's just a bit off and you're still learning each other and that's proving difficult it may question you it may cause you to question everything and I think that's a tough place to be in because it can breathe some kind of insecurity in your relationship and so many questions surrounding raw am I even meant to really be with you and then it stops you from actually trying and putting in the effort necessary to make things like relationships work and so I don't believe in soulmates I don't believe in the one but I do believe that once you pick your one you make that one work your goals at the age of 40 what will you be doing I pray that when I am in my 40s, I will be raising children who are happy, raising children who are confident. I pray that I am like doing a lot of philanthropic work, um, like really impactful work. I pray that I'm building companies at that stage which are sustainable, which are solid, um, which are impactful and profitable. I pray that when I am 40 years old, I am in a very loving marriage and I am still deeply in love and like in romantic love with my husband. Um, I pray to still be, I would say I, I pray to still be traveling. I'd also say in 14 years, I'd really want TMS to be like a global, um, a global digital community and something which has really empowered people in the place of education, um, in the place of like women's research and development. And maybe I'll be dibble, dibble dabbling my toes a bit into um, production and politics. I know it seems like two very separate worlds, but let's see what the Lord has in plan. <laughs> Is blocking someone necessary to overcome them? No. I don't think so. I don't think you have to block someone in order to get over them. But I do think sometimes separation is necessary. And if the only way you can gain separation is to unfollow or, you know, mute, I would rather go down those avenues than to block. Because I feel like a block is like, don't block me and then unblock me. If you're going to block me, the block is final. OK, so I think sometimes we do these things in haste and yeah, I think there are other avenues to go by unless you definitely know that you want that bridge to be burnt and like you want nothing to do with this person anymore. I wouldn't say go down the blocking route. I would just do an unfollow or a mute. No, I don't think it's necessary. But also if that's what you've got to do, then that's what you've got to do. But also if you then want to open the door again to that relationship or, you know, have a conversation with that person, you have to be willing to deal with the consequences that may come 
with their reaction to you blocking them, if that makes sense. And I think that's fair and balanced. How did you navigate the transition of leaving your nine to five and becoming an entrepreneur? I have never had a nine to five before. I have had internships, which have been like six weeks to 12 weeks where I have worked a nine to five, um, but that was whilst I was doing my undergrad. And yeah, after I graduated from school, I've never worked for anybody nine to five. I feel like this is interesting because I feel like I might do it the reverse way. If one day I do decide to get a nine to five or it will probably even be a nine to six or seven because I, I can imagine it being really aligned to my purpose and something I really want to do that I'll just give more of my time to it. And most modern day jobs are not nine to five. Um, so I would say I have nothing to contribute to this question. <laughs> Essentially, I have nothing to contribute, yeah, because I've never done it. How do you be consistent with saving up, um, especially with no particular plan for what to do with it? Have a plan, um, like I'm gonna put away this amount every month and no matter whether I have a vision for that money, I do think having a vision for your money is important though. I think it motivates you. But even if it, you don't have that, I think you just know that regardless, this is the number that I am putting aside. It doesn't have to be a huge number, um, especially if you don't have a target amount. I would just say set a target amount, set a time frame that you wanna save that money in and then just divide you know, the target by the months and put that money aside every month and just refuse to touch it. If you need to put certain parameters in place, like putting it in a savings account, which will you know, penalize you for taking it out, then do that. But I would just say it comes down to your desire to be disciplined and you just doing it. And don't put too much pressure on yourself then as well. I think the advantage of this and the way you can frame it is, I don't necessarily need to be pressured by a specific time frame and a specific amount, but I do need to just train myself up in the area of discipline and consistency. And so let me commit an amount which I know I'll be able to do, which doesn't hurt me too much because I don't necessarily know what I'm sacrificing for, but still allows me to be disciplined. So, you know, if you know easily I could put aside a hundred pounds a month, then put aside a hundred pounds or a hundred dollars a month just to practice that habit and train that skill so that when the time comes for you to you know start putting aside maybe more because now you have a, a targeted goal you can just be motivated by you know the fact that you want to achieve this thing but you've already practiced that discipline you've already practiced that skill best makeup tips it's very interesting recently i've been getting a lot of compliments on my makeup and considering my makeup only takes me 15 minutes to do i'm actually so proud of myself makeup tutorials soon come my best makeup tip find a routine and stick to it find products you like and stick to them i have had the same makeup routine i kid you not for maybe the last four or five years if you go and watch my old makeup videos you will see exactly how i do my makeup the products might have actually changed though because i found the products that work for my skin type and like the climate that i live in but honestly don't change your routine all the time like i think because of the way we interact with makeup content especially if you enjoy makeup you may feel kind of motivated to switch up your makeup all the time or switch up your makeup routine all the time or switch up the products you're using. And I think that works if you're a makeup enthusiast, if you have the money to like put into new products and also if you have the time to sit there and learn new methods all the time. But the thing that has helped me master doing my makeup and master my face is just doing the same thing repetitively. And now I can do it almost instinctively. So that's what I would say. If you are looking for like a very simple everyday routine, which you can do quickly, which is what I do, find a routine and stick to it. And this brings us to the last question, which is the one that I was asked the most, cause the girls wanna know, is our good sis dating? And the answer to that is, your good sis is happy. You can infer from that what it is you want. So <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoyed catching up a little bit, hearing my thoughts here and there. And I really do recommend that you do sign up to Audible and download Lolly Adefope's fan mail on the app and definitely become a member. I cannot too enough about how amazing Audible is, especially for a lot of the areas which you guys have asked me questions on, like your personal development, building a business, kind of handling different seasons and transitions in your life. 
there are books about literally everything in the world. And so if you want access to a wide library of books, a big catalog of content and things which are constantly being updated with up-to-date information, then you need to sign up to Audible, especially if you want to integrate learning into your everyday life. I know it can be hard to sit down and just read a book. So if you want to be able to do it whilst you're on a walk, cleaning your house, out and about, then definitely check out Audible. The link is in the description, so make sure you click it. And thank you so much to Audible for sponsoring today's video. Sisters, I will talk to you very, very soon. And as always, stay beautiful and stay blessed. Mwah.